Introduction Countless studies have shown that most employees are disengaged at work, no matter how much they're paid, how prestigious their roles are, or how many perks their jobs include. What is employee disengagement costing your company? And what could a more engaged workforce mean for your company's performance? The answer to both questions is a lot. In this snapshot, you'll learn Gino Wickman and Renee Boer's take on being a great boss and why it is the best thing you can do for your organization. Using their advice, you'll finally be able to bring out the best in your employees. Attract an all-star team with core values. According to Jim Collins, author of Built to Last, the most successful organizations across a variety of industries owe their success to their leaders' abilities to define a clear set of core values for their organizations and then recruit, promote, and retain employees based on how well they embody those core values. Doing this allows you to spend your time and resources multiplying your efforts rather than putting out fires or micromanaging your employees. Wickman and Bohr write that there are three key steps you should take to create and maintain an all-star team. First, you need to make sure that your organization has clearly defined its core values. Core values are the factors that make up your organization's soul. They are important because they steer your team in the right direction when the time comes to make decisions or navigate difficult situations. For example, Dick Gill, the founder of Gill Security, a home security system provider, defines his company's three core values as continuous improvement, customers first, and old-fashioned work ethic. Gill makes decisions about who to hire and who to promote based on how well they embody these core values. As a result, Gill has curated a team of employees that provide services for their clients that go well beyond what is required in their contracts, even if Gill isn't around to guide them himself. This has created a name for Gill in the security system market, and on at least one occasion, a good deed that one of Gill's employees did saved a client's property from serious damage. Most importantly, because Gill has built a team he can trust, he doesn't have to get heavily involved in the aspects of day-to-day -day operations. Instead, he can focus on providing his employees with new growth opportunities and identifying new ways for his business to remain at the forefront of its industry. Once you've defined your company's core values, make a list of the people who work for you and give them a score on a scale of 1 to 3 for how well they embody each of your organization's core values. Then, for each employee's unique role, create a list of important values and qualifications and score them on each of those as well. For instance, an accountant at Gill Security would need to be committed to accuracy, punctuality, legal compliance, and accountability on top of fulfilling the core values. Set a minimum score that your team members should meet to be a sufficiently good fit for their roles. Next, tally up the points and see who meets your minimum requirements. Third, take action based on the degree to which your employees line up with the core values you've defined. Hopefully, for most of your employees, this simply means providing some positive feedback about the areas in which they are excelling, as well as some constructive criticism on how to better align themselves with their role requirements and the company's core values. But for employees that do not meet your minimum requirements, you may need to take less pleasant action. Wickman and Bohr recommend a three-strike approach. In this approach, strike one is when you explain to an employee how they're falling short of the core values or role requirements, as well as what is needed to rectify the situation and how much time they have to do so, usually 30 days. Next, meet with the person again and review the prior 30 days' performance. If the person hasn't improved, review what is going wrong and give them another 30 days to improve. If the issue isn't resolved by the third meeting, it's time for you to terminate that person's position. Although weeding out team members who are not a good fit for their roles or your organization can be painful, it will save you time, energy, and unpleasant experiences, making it a worthwhile investment. Establish a shared vision. Your number one goal as a boss is to provide clear directions and regular guidance so that people march toward a clearly defined destination. This is very different from the common approach of asking people to do things in a haphazard, unclear way that can leave your employees confused or unmotivated. According to Wickman and Bohr, you should make five things crystal clear for your employees. First, clearly articulate your company's core values and core focus. Second, clearly articulate the company's marketing strategy, which includes a clear overview of what your ideal customer is like and what attracts them to your organization. This will help your employees understand the link between their actions and the people your organization is trying to serve. Third, clearly articulate your organization's 10-year, 3-year, and 1-year targets. This helps your employees understand how their actions tie into the big picture as well as the not-so-distant future. Fourth, 
Break down your one-year plan into smaller components, and based on those components, create or articulate what Wickman and Bohr call ROCKS. These are your organization's three to seven most important priorities for the next 90 days. Each ROCK is owned by someone in your organization to encourage accountability and minimize misunderstandings about who should do what. For example, if part of your organization's one-year plan is growing your prospect list to 1 million people, you might assign your marketing manager a rock of growing your list to 250,000 during the first 90 days of the year. Finally, with the help of your employees, articulate a list of issues, ideas, opportunities, obstacles, and barriers that your organization and team must address in both the long and short run in order to achieve your goals. You should review these five things regularly with your employees, ideally at least once per quarter. Additionally, to make sure your employees stay on track and alert you to new issues as they come up, you should conduct a weekly meeting to review to-dos, rocks, and issues. Create a culture of accountability. The key to making sure that your employees take your expectations seriously and work hard to fulfill them is to hold everyone, including yourself, accountable on a daily basis. According to Wickman and Bohr, the formula for accountability is simple. Being a great leader plus being a great manager equals accountability. L plus M equals A. Be a great leader. To be a great leader, you need to provide clear direction for your employees by regularly reminding them of the five elements discussed in the previous section. On top of that, it's important to make sure you provide your employees with the resources they need to succeed, whether that is technology, training, or your personal time. In addition, you must make it clear that you trust your employees to do their jobs well. Further, you should embody selfless behavior that is always aligned with the greater good of the company rather than your personal benefit. In other words, to be a great leader, you should inspire and empower your employees to do their best while making it clear that you're always acting in the best interest of the organization. Be a great manager. Being a great manager includes making the expectations for your employees clear, understanding what is on their minds, and giving them concrete opportunities to earn your trust and respect. A lot of this comes down to developing an effective communication style. Regardless of your personal communication style, one of the surest ways to cultivate a strong relationship with your employees is by recognizing and rewarding their accomplishments and giving them actionable feedback. Studies repeatedly show that people work harder for recognition than they do for money. Napoleon Bonaparte once remarked that soldiers would make tremendous sacrifices to get recognition, even if that recognition was only in the form of a colored ribbon. As a general rule, you should give constructive criticism in private whenever possible, so your employees don't associate constructive criticism with public embarrassment. However, you should give praise publicly whenever possible. A great way of doing this is to use meetings as a platform to recognize people for their accomplishments in front of their peers. This will make your employees proud and motivate them to work hard, which benefits everyone around them. Effective Check-Ins David Pink, author of Drive, The Surprising Truth About What Motivates Us, points to three major factors that directly influence a person's level of motivation, autonomy, mastery, and purpose. By defining your company's core values and core focus, you've given your employees a sense of purpose. But to provide your employees with a sense of autonomy and mastery, you need to give them the opportunity to take ownership of their rocks and see the measurable results of their effort. This is where a lot of bosses fall short. Some bosses provide their employees with a clear understanding of the values and targets they should aim for, but then do nothing to make sure these lofty ideas and goals translate into real-world outcomes. Other bosses are afraid their employees will get off track in fulfilling their rocks and, as a result, end up micromanaging. There are three measures you can take to keep your team on track so that they learn to earn a sense of autonomy and mastery through hard work. Conduct weekly meetings with all your employees, have quarterly one-on-one conversations with each of your employees, and have company-wide quarterly meetings. Weekly Meetings Wickman and Bohr recommend establishing a 60- to 90-minute weekly meeting for all employees that report directly to you. These meetings should be at the same time every week and follow a consistent format that involves discussing measurable progress toward quarterly rocks. These meetings hold your employees individually accountable for how much progress they are making toward fulfilling their rocks. Additionally, these meetings provide an excellent setting to discuss and resolve issues that are getting in the way of their progress. Quarterly Conversations Once a quarter, carve out time for a one-on-one conversation with each of your employees. During the conversation, you should review what's working and what isn't, from both your perspective and the employee's perspective. 
Start by asking your employee to share the tasks and procedures they feel are going well within the organization, as well as what you are doing well. Then ask your employee what's not working, both within the organization and in terms of what you are doing. Whatever they say, thank them for sharing their opinion before asking additional questions to get to the root cause of any problems they bring up. Remember that it is crucial to encourage your employee to say what's on their mind rather than hiding it from you out of a desire to make you happy. Together with the employee, create a plan to address whatever issues are blocking their progress. Quarterly Company Reviews Once per quarter, you should hold a state-of-the-company meeting to share performance metrics, communicate goals, and recognize people who have done a particularly good job of exemplifying your company's core values. During this review, allow employees to share their opinions and discuss what they think is going well, what they think is not going well, and what they think should be done to improve any issues. You should also go over rocks and whether your company is on track to achieve its 1, 3, and 10-year vision. Then outline rocks for the next quarter and allow your employees to share any issues that they foresee getting in the way of these goals being accomplished, as well as ideas about how to mitigate those issues. By establishing regular, productive communications with your employees individually and collectively, you'll ensure that your company's core values and objectives are constantly at the front of everyone's awareness and that your employees are consistently motivated to fulfill them. During each of these check-ins, make sure you offer your employees the opportunity to point out ways in which you could do a better job of helping them be their best, helping the organization reach its targets, and embodying the organization's core values. After all, the values and standards you set for your employees are only as good as your commitment to fulfilling them. Conclusion in this snapshot, you've learned how to be a great boss by cultivating a team full of great employees, empowering and incentivizing them to do their best, and holding them accountable for living up to their full potential. Most importantly, you've learned about the value of effective communication. Clear communication enables you to provide your employees with an inspiring vision of what is possible, a clear set of expectations for both you and your team, and the opportunity for everyone to continuously improve. Whether you're in charge of a small team, a startup, or a Fortune 500 company, you'll be able to apply the techniques from this snapshot to rise from being a good boss to a great boss. About Gino Wickman and Rene Bohr Gino Wickman is a best-selling author and the creator of the Entrepreneurial Operating System, EOS, a holistic system that helps leaders get control of their organizations, achieve a better work-life balance, and gain more traction. This system empowers the entire organization to advance together as a healthy, functional, and cohesive team. Wickman is also the founder of EOS Worldwide, an organization of successful entrepreneurs from a variety of business backgrounds that collaborate to help people around the world experience the benefits of EOS. Rene Bohr has 30 years' experience in the restaurant industry with national brands such as Pizza Hut and Jamba Juice. Since 2008, Bohr has worked with leadership teams at more than 50 privately held companies as a certified implementer of EOS and has helped hundreds of bosses grow their organizations while enjoying personal freedom. Thank you for listening to our quick learning audiobook review series. If you like what you heard, then check out our channel for more free audiobook reviews. We post new audiobooks every week. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell to be first to hear of our latest reviews.